All right, so a general reminder. So when you walk into the exam room, your examiner should greet you. They may say, buenos dias. They may say, um, como te llamas, right? To set you at ease, they'll just ask you how you're doing and you will respond, right? When the exam begins, you should do situations first and then the reading passage and then your conversation, right? Um, <clears throat> at any point during the exam, if you find that you have made an error in your pronunciation or in your grammar or in your understanding of the question and you make the correction yourself, then you there will be no penalty for the error, right? Once you correct yourself, um, as you are speaking, no penalty. As you are reading the passage, no penalty, right? Remember your agreement. So in Spanish, what has to agree? Um, subject and verb, adjectives, adverbs, and the thing that they are modifying, right? Remember your agreement, gender and adjectives and number and adjectives, right? Um, you can ask the, quest the examiner to repeat the question if you don't understand it or if you did not hear it. Clearly, you can ask them to repeat. So, ¿Puedes repetir la pregunta, por favor? As well as, repita, por favor, right? All right, as far as you can, use some idiomatic expressions. Try to slip some in. You should have a list with them that you um, try to use, a list of them rather that you try to use with your responses. Expect your examiner to ask you easy questions and hard questions. So what is an easy question? Perhaps something that is just a one sentence answer, right? Um, <clears throat> like what time do you wake up? And then you say the answer in one sentence, right? And then harder questions, which would be more like your descriptive question. So for each section, Prepare the descriptive questions and expect to get at least one, right? So in general, for the exam, you need to be ready to give facts. So your, you know, your data, your age, your um, the school that you attend, um, and so on, right? Opinions. So what you think about things, um, how you feel about things, what you like, what you dislike. So you need to know, uh, me gusta and me encanta and so on. And to describe activities, um, sometimes past events and sometimes things that could happen. In this section, we have questions on things that could happen in the future. So conditional tense too, right? But the majority will be in present tense. And the last thing, well, I just said this, right? Be prepared to um, answer at least one descriptive question from each section. Now, if you all have any questions, you could say them now. You could ask them now before we... Um, get into the questions. I'll just pause for a count of 10 or so. If you have a question, you could ask. All right, no problem. So <clears throat> let's continue. Um, so la rutina diaria, our daily routine is what we're looking at today. And before I go to the first slide with questions, I'm going to read the questions out loud. I'm going to say the questions out loud to you. I'm going to ask them. And so I want you to try and see what you can understand, right? So the next slide that we look at, the first slide with questions, will be asking you about the time that you do certain things in your daily routine, right? So here are the questions. Just see if you can understand them. A qué hora te despiertas? Generalmente. A qué hora... Te levantas generalmente. A qué hora te acuestas generalmente. A qué hora te levantas o te acuestas los fines de semana. A qué hora te levantas o te acuestas los días festivos. Hasta qué hora duermes los sábados o los domingos, o los fines de semana. ¿A qué hora te levantas o te acuestas entre la semana o durante la semana? All right. <clears throat> Did we make sense of those questions? What are the questions asking you? Were you able to tell? All right, so a qué hora is at what time, right? Right, the first time that you do something. So 
ask the first question, a que hora te despiertas o te levantas o te acuestas generalmente? So here's the question. <clears throat> a que hora te despiertas, te levantas o te acuestas generalmente? So this is actually three questions with the same sort of structure, right? So we have three answers we need to provide for them. Now, what, what do these mean? Right, so despiertas. <clears throat> I know that they are all reflexive, right? It's from despertar. Say, because it's reflexive, right? To wake up. So you wake up at a certain time, but you get yourself out of bed at possibly another time, right? So levantar. Levantar, say. Right? To get out of bed. So, so to actually get up, right? And then... Te acuestas is go to bed from acostarse. Right? To go to bed. Okay. And so acostar is radical change in <clears throat> O to U E. And despertar is radical change in I to um sorry, E to I E, right? So when we answer in your form, we have to be prepared to change the stem, right? Okay, so do we have answers for these questions? So some possible answers. Me despierto a las cinco de la mañana. All right, so I wake up at five in the morning. All right, uh, so despierto, right? And me is our reflexive pronoun here. What time do we get up out of bed? Me levanto a las cinco y media de la mañana. So we wake up at one time, but sometimes we lie in bed for a while. Uh, <clears throat> we might read news articles or we might check messages or we might drink a cup of coffee. So me levanto a las cinco y media, right? De la mañana. I go to bed um, at what time? So I have here at 11. So me acuesto a las once de la noche, 11 at night. Right, so this is 11 p.m., this is 5 a.m., and this is 5.30 a.m., right? And all of these are in the U form, me levanto, me acuesto, right? If you are confused about anything or you have any questions, please say, right? Um, Let's see, now, do any of you ever wake up before 5 o'clock? Sometimes you might wake up to study. What time in the morning do you wake up to study? Some people go to sleep when they get home and they wake up early in the morning to study. Can you use yo? Yes, you can use yo. So you could say, yo me despierto, yo me levanto, yo me acuesto, right? Okay, so somebody says they wake up at 2.30 in the morning. So in the early morning is not de la mañana, right? It's de la madrugada. So, um... We could say, me despierto, or yo me despierto, um, a las dos y media, right? So early morning hours um, would be de la madrugada. So if you want to impress the examiner with the fact that you know this idiomatic expression for early morning, you could say that, right? This vocabulary, you could say that. Uh, yeah, some of you wake up for school at four. Yeah, all right, that's pretty early too. Um, okay, second question. So we're looking now at what time we wake up on weekends versus what time we and what time we wake up on um holidays. Right. So if you want to minimize the different things you have to learn, you could say, "Well, I wake up at the same time as during the week." Right. La misma hora que um como durante la semana, if you want. Um, a different answer though. So if it's um a holiday, so C I dia festivo, right? Accent on the I here. Um como la Navidad, so like Christmas. So if it is a holiday like Christmas, o el dia de independencia, right? Like Independence Day, right? Me despierto. Um my chat is blocking the table. Right, I'll ask these, right? So at 10 o'clock. And then what time do I go to bed? A que hora te acuestas? 
Me acuesto muy tarde, alrededor de las dos de la madrugada. So I go to bed very late, right? Around, it's another idiomatic expression here, um, two in the morning, in the early morning, right? So pay attention to the grammar, right? Me despierto again, and me acuesto, right? And we're using I. Did the question use I? No, it did not. But we are using I because we know this means there is or there are, right? If you have questions, you put them in the chat, right? And if you have a different answer you want to check for any of the questions, you could put that in the chat too. Okay, um, weekends now. So, you know, you could say the same answer for weekends durante los fines, oh, um, sorry, los fines de semana, me acuesto muy tarde, or um, me despierto a las diez, right? Same answer, if you want to minimize the number of things you're learning, um, you could say the same answer for holidays and for weekends, right? Here's another possibility. Some people like to be truthful to their experience, right? So, Durante los fines de semana, me levanto a las ocho los domingos. So I wake up at eight o'clock on Sundays. Y a las seis los sábados. So six o'clock on Saturdays. Why? Because what do a lot of us have? We have lessons. Porque tengo que asistir a clases de repaso. So I just put revision classes. So I have to attend revision classes. Clases de repaso. Right? Me acuesto a medianoche por la mayoría. So I go to sleep at midnight most of the time, for the most part. Mostly, right? For the majority of the time. Por la mayoría. All right. Third question. ¿Hasta qué hora duermes? Los sábados o los domingos o los fines de semana. So after what time do you sleep um, on Saturdays, on Sundays, the end of the week? I'm sorry, yeah, the weekends, right? So, um, you know, a lot of us, we like to use back the same exact phrasing from the question. So we might say, um, duermo hasta um, las Yes, or whatever the answer is, right? But if you want to use back the phrasing, duermo after, at any time, right? Um, los fines de semana. Now, if it is not important to you to use back the exact phrasing, then you can answer with any of the suggestions above, right? We can say, me despierto a las diez, me acuesto muy tarde, Alrededor de las dos. Well, it doesn't ask what time we go to sleep. So we'll just answer what they ask about um, the time that we sleep until. So um, not the second part for this one, but the first part. Me despierto a las diez, right? Um, B could work. Durante los fines de semana, me levanto a las ocho los domingos y a las seis los sábados, etc. Right? Um, do I think they would uh, mark you the same with or without the phrasing? I don't think the phrasing would affect the mark once you are answering the question. In English, if we have a conversation, like a normal conversation, you do not repeat the phrasing when answering my question. You just answer it to my face, right? This is something we practice when we do comprehension. We take back the phrasing from the question. You would only lose marks if, for example, the examiner asked, hasta que hora duermes los sábados? And you see how just now I just started to parrot off part A and forgot that this second piece is about what time I go to bed. Then I would lose marks if I said that to the examiner. But if I just said, I wake up at 10, it would answer the question. It would be okay. They would move on. They have a lot of questions to ask you. <clears throat> Okay, so let's look at, um, there's a fourth question on this page. Let's look at it at the, on this slide, All right? A que hora te levantas? Um, so now we're talking about during the week. Y a que hora te acuestas entre, sem well, I think this is supposed to be entre la semana. I think this was a typo in the paper. Um, and durante la semana, right? A que hora te levantas? So 
What time do you wake up? Well, some of you have already answered that question. We've already answered it up here for number one. Right? Durante la semana, me levanto a las cinco y media de la mañana. Um, and what time do we go to bed? Me acuesto a las once de la noche. So it's same as for number one. Right? <clears throat> So not every question will re require a completely different answer. Okay, so I can hold this slide for 30 more seconds. Please screenshot or plan to come back to the recording if you need to, right? So 30 seconds and then we're continuing. Okay, so let's look at our next slide. Oh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to read you the questions again. <clears throat> okay, so the next slide has to do with um, <clears throat> waking up early. ¿Cómo te sientes cuando tienes que despertarte temprano? ¿Cómo te sientes cuando tienes que despertarte temprano? All right, so... Um, how do you feel? How do you feel when you have to wake up early? Right? Um, <clears throat> how do we feel? Some people are morning people and they feel great. Some people are not morning people and they resent that early morning wake up for the rest of the day, right? So if we are not a morning person, no me gusta levantarme temprano. Siempre me siento cansado. All right. Now, if we are a morning person, we might answer a little differently. How would we answer? Me encanta levantarme temprano. Entonces, el día se llena de posibilidades y puedo completar muchas cosas. Okay. Now, if you stop your answer after the first sentence, um, it might be okay, right? But it might be nice to give a reason because it asks about feeling. Right? Um, so feeling usually takes a little bit more to explain. Now let's look at the agreement here. It's what is pleasing to me. So I have to say me gusta, right? So a no me gusta in this case. And I am the one waking up. So even though um, this verb is in the infinitive, it still has to agree with me. So I have to say me, the yo form, right? Um, now we wouldn't say yo no me gusta, right? Since people were asking about including yo earlier on. We would say a mi. No me gusta, right? Same for here. A mí, me encanta, right? Um, siempre me siento cansado. cansado. Now, if I am a girl, it would become cansada, right? I love to wake up early. Me encanta levantarme temprano. Again, the agreement with me. The pronoun has to agree. Entonces, el día se llena de posibilidades. And then the day is full of possibilities and I can complete many things. <clears throat> um, okay, so why is it a mi and not yo? Um, the verb gustar, which we simply translate as to like, doesn't actually mean to like, right? We say it to like because that's how you express it in English, but it really means to be pleasing to. To someone, right? Who starts saying, so that tells us to someone. So this sentence really means waking up early is pleasing to me. Waking up early pleases me, right? So I cannot say, um, it wouldn't make sense for me to say yo, because yo is not doing the action. All 
All right, so I'm going to wait 30 seconds again. And then um, change the side, right? If anybody needs more explanation about anything, you know, please say. Okay, so we're going ahead. All right, so now we're on to our routine. So actually, let me read the questions again. ¿Qué haces después? ¿Qué haces después de? Uh, después de levantarte. O ¿qué haces de, después de bañarte? ¿Qué haces después de vestirte? All right. Now, if you are listening out, for, you have to remember about this reflexive pronoun, right? If you're listening out for an infinitive and then you hear the examiner say T at the end, it is because the verb is reflexive. And so that T at the end is, is you. So what do you do after or when um, you wake up? When you bathe, or after you bathe, or when you bathe, um, after you dress yourself, or when you dress yourself, what do you do, right? Um, so this is asking us to talk about our routine. All right. So here's a, a possible routine that, of course, you could you could tweak to suit you, right? So me levanto a las cinco y media, right? So I wake up. So it's the same things we've been saying, right? I get up, not wake up. I get up um, at 5.30 y después tomo un café y desayuno, right? So after I have, I take a coffee and breakfast, right? I have a coffee, I have breakfast, All right? Luego, me baño y me visto. So afterwards, I bathe and I dress. Now, if you start off by saying um, this, you're talking about uh, what you do after you dress, you could still use the same vocabulary, just change it around. So you say, después de um, vestirme, um, tomo un café y desayuno, right? So after dressing myself, so this place, they vestir me, right? Or um, et cetera, et cetera. Tomo un café, and so on, right? All right, también me gusta verificar que tengo todas las cosas que necesite por el día. Y voy al colegio in coche con mi madre, right? So also, I like to verify, do you do this? Um, that I have all the things that I might need or that might be necessary for the day, right? Some people do this. Um, before you leave the house, you check to make sure you have your project, you have your lab book, you have this, you have that, whatever you need to carry to school, right? And we get to use subjunctive here, right? If this is a little too complicated and you don't want to say all of this because you're afraid you might make mistakes with the grammar, then um, luego me baño y me visto. So I, I bathe, I dress, um, y voy al colegio en coche con mi madre. I, and I go to school by car with my mother, right? All right, so our next question is going to be, ¿Qué actividades? prefieres hacer durante la mañana? ¿Qué actividades prefieres hacer durante la tarde? ¿Qué actividades prefieres hacer durante la noche? So you can prepare your answer if you like. I'm going to wait 10 more seconds and then change the slide.
Right. So let's move on. And to the people on YouTube, because the meeting is being streamed on YouTube, remember that um, you can post any questions you have as comments that I can respond to later on, right? Right, so el día y la noche, day and night. And a lot of my ideas in this presentation are missing their accents, right? So you don't make that mistake. You make sure you put in your accent on your eye here. ¿Qué actividades? ¿Prefieres hacer durante la mañana o la tarde o la noche? So what activities do you prefer to do during morning, during the evening, during the nighttime, right? Well, what are some things you all prefer to do at different times of day? I know I don't expect to hear breakfast in the morning and dinner at night, right? But what are some things, some activities that you prefer to do? Think about things like um, pastimes. So when do you listen to music? When do you study? When do you talk to your friends? When do you do any household chores? All right, so when you know when your answer, send it, right? Um, <clears throat> So I have, for me, I put the nighttime one first because I could think of an answer for that first. So, prefiero estudiar y leer durante la noche. Right? So uh, what else are there, what do young people like to do? do you all, you, um, some, some people read, right? Some people read things online. Um, what else do you do? Remember, I'm not a young person anymore, so I will not know. You'll have to tell me, and we'll put it into Spanish. Okay, so durante la mañana, so in the morning, uh, me gusta mirar películas. Now, perhaps um, it's a school day, so we can't mirar películas, but we can also hacer ejercicio, and we can hablar con mis amigos, right? Or if all your friends are girls, you can say con mis amigas, right? So up here we have, I prefer to study and read during the night. Prefiero estudiar y leer durante la noche. Durante la mañana me gusta mirar películas, hacer ejercicio y hablar con mis amigos, watch movies, exercise, talk to my friends. Um, this one is in bold for some reason. Durante la tarde... Me gusta hacer mis tareas de casa y a veces me gusta tomar el café. See, it's spoken like a true old lady. In the evening, I like to do my chores in the house, tareas de casa, and sometimes um, I like to have coffee. Right? <clears throat> okay, so I'm just looking at the chat. You all have some, uh, some good answers here too. Okay, so I play football with my friends. Um, <clears throat> and you have to, now we have to use our brains, of course, when we get a question. If the examiner says in the morning, um, then we need to specify. Okay, so like I have mirror pelliculas here, right? This is not a thing we could do during the term. Perhaps you could say this one, hablar con mis amigos, or you could specify los fines de semana, right? You like to watch movies. Okay, other answers that have come in the chat. Um, juego. What other activities do you like to do, guys? All right, juego al football. Al football. Right. Um, con mis amigos. Okay, and well, this could be you, and then this would be a common G. All right, so yo juego al, al football con mis amigos, right? Um, prefiero hacer, I prefer to do, um, um, que hacer es, so I prefer to do, 
los que hacer es um, durante la mañana, ok, so I prefer to do chores in the morning. Um, and during the night, prefiero jugar um, juegos de, de video, right? So prefiero jugar um, juegos de video, de video, I guess, right? All right, so this is video games, right? All right, now if you send a message in the chat and answer, please check it against what I wrote on the screen. If it is different from what you have a little bit and you have a question about why, you could tell me. All right, I like to play the guitar. Good, good one. If you play an instrument, that's an interesting thing to say. So me gusta tocar la guitarra. Make sure you can roll your R when you if you're seeing this, right? <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna count to ten seconds, and then we have to move on to the next um, set of questions, right? So next question is kind of a long um, answer. ¿Cómo sería tu día perfecto o ideal? ¿Cómo sería tu día perfecto o ideal? So let me figure out what that one says. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. What would be your perfect, what would your perfect day be like? That's this question. Como sería tu día perfecto o ideal? What would your perfect day be like? Right? Now look at the tense. Um, sería, so this is conditional tense, right? So here is a descriptive question that is asking you to use conditional tense. Now, let's say that you didn't pick up an app and you answer the whole thing in perfect tense. You might just lose a mark, maybe two out of a potential five, right? So not the end of the world if everything else was fine. So don't worry too much, but I am pointing out that this is to be answered in conditional tense, right? Which is something that could happen, but might not happen. Um, so we're not sure, right? Now, another th interesting thing is if you put this question into Google, Google Translate, and you ask it, um, if you if you start giving it word sentences in Google Translate, right? It might give you conditional tense, but it might also give you um, imperfect tense, right? Something that we used to do in the past is also translated with word in English. So it would be unclear. So please keep that in mind when we are using things like Google Translate. Google Translate does not always understand the context and sometimes make mis makes mistakes. So you have to be alert for that, right? Not everything it says is perfect. Okay, so first thing, um, we have a little introductory phrase here. Para tener un día perfecto. So to have a perfect day, Primero que nada, so first of all, right, so a little idiomatic expression, me levantaría tarde, so note the conditional tense, I would wake up, I would get out of bed late, right? So if you're staying for my perfect day, I get to sleep late. Luego, tomaría café y desayunaría mientras miraría videos en YouTube, right? So what would I do next? What would you all do next after you wake up late? So for me, like the next thing I want to do is have coffee, right? So I would have coffee, tomaría café, 
tomar is to have something like to eat or drink, right? Um, <clears throat> e, I, and then I would have breakfast. So breakfast, the noun is desayuno. Right? But desayunar is also a thing. It's a verb that means to have breakfast, to breakfast. Right? So I would have breakfast and then I would do, um, this is what I envision teenagers wanting to do. Look at videos on YouTube. Am I wrong? Am I right? So mirar to look at, right? <laughs> we prefer to use mirar instead of ver. Ver is more like to see, like you're in a car and you're driving and you see trees and you see this and you see that, but you're not actively looking at it. So mirar to look at. So I would look at videos on YouTube, right? Okay, más tarde, mis amigos y yo iríamos al centro comercial y visitaría todas las librerías. So, later, my friends and I, if your friends are all good, well, the examiner won't know, so amigos is fine, right? My friends and I would go to the mall. Now, I personally find mall incidents and mall experiences to be very versatile. They could fit into most topics. So, you know, it might be worthwhile to prepare um, uh, talking about the experience of going to the mall with your friends and what you would do there, right? And we would visit, um, well, this is I would visit, not we would visit. So, Fisitaria, I would visit Todas Las Librerías. I would go to all the bookstores, right? Tell conditional tense. Tenaríamos in nuestro restaurante favorito. So we would eat in our favorite restaurant. So, you know, all of these restaurants is masculine, but this is these are places you have to think about agreements, right? So if something else was feminine, then it would change. Y luego iríamos a ver una película, and then we would go to see a movie, right? Um, and then to close off, este sería mi día perfecto. So this question invites us to say more than one sentence. You don't necessarily need to say all the ones I have. What else would you all do on your perfect day? Sleep. Okay, so perhaps if we want to talk about activities, we could say um, durante mi dia perfecto. I would sleep. Dormi ria, dormi ria por todo el día. I would sleep for the whole day. All right? I think this question is okay. It shows that the, the person understands the tense and um, they just want to do one thing. Okay. All right. But I think this is a question that invites a little more um, discussion. If you said I would sleep, you know, for um, let's say the mo for the most part of the day, right? So for la mayoría del día, right? Y después, um, mis amigos y yo. Um, somebody suggested a water park, a water park, iríamos um, a un, so if you want to say a un parque acuático, right, you could do that, or um, you could say the name of the park. You could even probably say the name in English and it would, it, well, yeah, okay, Spanish would be better, like the student said, um, acuático, right? Um, Cinco islas.
All right, so 10 seconds and I'm gonna change the side, right? And then the next one is another sort of long question. That one is, describe un día típico tuyo. So what does that mean? Describe un día típico tuyo. So now I have given you a really long answer, one to, four, one to five, right? Um, but look, these students came up with this shorter answer here that is scribbled at the bottom and it would probably get just as many marks. Right, so at least try and say two things. Okay, so let's go to the next slide where we will be describing a typical day. Describe your typical day. Describe un día típico to you, right? Describe your typical day. So first thing, what do you do? We're going back to things that we've already said that we do in the morning. We wake up at a certain time. We get up at a certain time. We have breakfast. Um, we plan out our day, whatever, right? So the only distinction with these answers that I have made in prepar in as preparation is whether it's a day and during the week or whether it's a weekend day, I think, right? All right, so normalmente. So here we could use um, <clears throat> imperfect tense, but you could also use present tense. I've given you the imperfect tense because it would be a little bit more work. Um, but you could also use present tense. It would be fine, right? So how would we answer this in English? We would say, Normally, I would wake up at six and I would brush my teeth and I would get dressed and I would have breakfast, right? Now, this has, this has happened in the past because it's a typical day. So now we could use um, imperfect, right? But you can also say, normally, me despierta, despierto, right? A las seis, en punto, exactly at six o'clock. Um, me cepillo, right? I brush my teeth, um, los dientes. And remember that when we're talking about body parts in English, we say my teeth, my hand, my hair, my face, whatever. But in Spanish, it's still the definite article, right? It's still los, um, not mis dientes, right? Me vestía y desayunaba. So we could also say me visto, me desayuno. Well, not me desayuno. That would mean I have myself a breakfast. So no. Um, this I, you know, right? So present tense is perfectly acceptable here. Okay, so that's our morning. Um, this is de eso. Voy a la escuela. So I'm going to just write the present tense alternatives on top, right? Iba is, so I would go to school or I go to school. Volví a casa. I would return home, right? Vuelvo a casa. Alimentaba mi mascota. I would feed my pet. There's my little pet here. Try a little hot, right? Um, alimento would be the present tense from alimentar, right? Um, hacia mis quehaceres. So I do my chores y mis tareas. Two words for chores. Algo, right? Um, oh, okay, so that's one thing. If it's a school day, that's what happens. You go to school, you come back, you do all your chores, right? Oh, si no es día escolar, so if it is not a school day, haría una lista de cosas por hacer. So I would make a list of things to do, right? Okay, haría las tareas del hogar. So I would do the household chores, another way to say household chores. And then perhaps I would speak with um, some friends, Okay, por la noche. So in the nighttime now, mi familia y yo cenamos y luego hago 
algo divertido como leer o escuchar música. So at night, my family and I would have dinner and then uh, we would do something interesting like read or listen to music. And este es mi día típico, right? This is my typical day. Okay, any questions? You you know, your answer doesn't have to have all of this. You could pick one thing from number one. You could just say what time you wake up. You could just say that you go to school and you come home and you do your chores, right? If you want to say you have um, lessons, you could say that. All right, so half a minute. Um, oh, okay, so yes, all of this is a possibility for answering this question. But remember, my job is to give you um, something to choose from. You don't have to answer all of it, right? You don't have to answer the question with all of it. If I asked you in English, what is your typical day like? What would you tell me in English? Would you give me this detail or rundown? Or would you tell me, well, I wake up at this time and then I get ready and I go to school and I come home and I do my chores and I go to sleep. Right? So if if you're just going to give me a shorter answer, then you could just focus on this piece, right? Me despertaba los um days. Um Iba a la escuela, volví a casa, um, tía mis quehacer. So that's one answer, right? Another answer could be this piece again, right? And then now you could say, um, I would do my chores and then I would talk to my friends, right? And if you feel ambitious, you could um, add in this piece here, right? So pick and choose what resonates with you. Some some vocabulary will um, be vocab that you know and some might be new. So pick what you feel comfortable with, right? The yellow is one option, the blue is another option. All right, so 30 seconds and then, um, well, actually less than 30, more like 10. And I'm gonna change the slide, right? So take a screenshot if you need to. Okay, so we have to continue. Okay, let's say studios. First question. De qué manera tus responsabilidades en casa afectan tus estudios? So what is this question asking? De qué manera, in what way, in what manner, right? Um, how do your responsibilities at home affect your studies? For some people, the answer is going to be it doesn't affect it at all, right? And for some people, the answer will be, well, it's a big problem, right? So we have two possible ways probably we could go with this. Your responsibilities. Affect your studies, right? All right, so one possible answer. They don't affect them. So no les afectan. They don't affect them. No tengo muchas responsibilidades. I don't have a lot of responsibilities. And if you want to be fancy, es de año, this year, a causa de mis exámenes, right? So some people might have a ease up because of exams. And then for others, if, they, if it is a problem, um, well, I didn't write this in, but you could say les afectan mucho, right? So they affect them a lot. A veces es difícil hacer todo. Right? All right, next question. ¿Cómo te sientes después de estudiar mucho? ¿Cómo te sientes después de estudiar mucho? 
How do you feel after studying a lot? How do you feel? Do you feel tired? Do you feel like you could take on the world? How do you feel? Right? So this answer combines both. Verdadero means this. So we have a, an, um, an idiomatic expression. So really, truly. Um, me canso, I am tired, right? But, pero, también estoy orgulloso. Or if you are female, estoy orgullosa. Right? I am tired, but proud. Right? And if you want to put back the phrasing, this place is estudiar mucho. Right? Okay, next question. Cuando haces tus deberes? When do you do your homework? Um, when do you do your homework? All right, so a lot of people, it's um in the evening or in the night. So los hago el fi al fin del día escolar. So at the end of the school day, right? A simpler way to say this is después del colegio, right? Or um, cuando regrese a casa. So when I return home, All right? So I do them at the end of the day, at the end of the school day, um, when I return home. Si tengo muchos deberes, los hago después de la cena. I do, um, I'm thinking it should be hago los demás. I do the rest. Um, after dinner. Now, if you guys want to see a time, because time is, um, or you are going to race to is another option. <laughs> time is easy for you. Then you could say, um, I go mis deberes a las seis in punto. I do my homework at six o'clock exactly, right? Okay, Chantal has a really good answer here. I go mi tarea después de tomar una siesta cuando regreso a casa. So you take a little nap a siesta when you come home and then you um cuando, uh yeah then you continue with your homework right okay let's look at the next one hasta que hora estudias por la noche so until what time do you study at night estudio hasta la medianoche so i study to midnight um okay Last question on the side. A qué hora del día prefieres estudiar? So, at what time of day do you prefer to study? Por qué? And another version of this question. A qué hora te gusta estudiar en casa? A qué hora te gusta estudiar en casa? So, at what time do you like to study at home? Prefiero estudiar durante la noche. So I just put during the night, right? Porque toda mi familia duerme. Y está tranquila. So what does this say? I prefer to study at night because all of my family is sleeping and it's quiet. As in the house is quiet. So I've made tranquila. Um, uh, let me put in la casa here. If I do not have la casa, it's not clear why tranquila is tranquila and not just tranquila, right? <clears throat> y la casa está tranquila, right? Okay, so I'm just going to reread the questions we have on this slide. Just listen to them, make sure that you understand what they're saying. ¿De qué manera tus responsabilidades en casa afectan tus estudios? ¿Cómo te sientes después de estudiar mucho? ¿Cuándo haces tus deberes? ¿Hasta qué hora estudias por la noche? ¿A qué hora del día prefieres estudiar? ¿Por qué? ¿A qué hora te gusta estudiar en casa? Right, and again, you could put an actual time. You could say, me gusta estudiar a las once. Cuando está 
tranquilo, whatever you want, right? All right, so I'm going to the 10 and we're going to the next slide, right? Okay, so we have seven more slides in total. Um, <clears throat> the next slide is Las Tareas Domesticas. So we're going to focus a little bit more on household tasks, right? I'm going to read the questions and see if you can make sense of them. ¿Qué responsabilidades tienes en casa? ¿Qué responsabilidades tienes en casa? And another way to say it, ¿Cómo ayudas en casa? ¿Cómo ayudas en casa? Okay, next one. ¿Cuándo ayudas con la preparación de la comida? ¿Cuándo ayudas con la preparación de la comida? All right, 17. ¿Quién te ayuda en casa con tus tareas? ¿Quién te ayuda en casa con tus tareas? All right. Next one. ¿Cuándo ayudas con la preparación de la comida? ¿Cuándo ayudas con la preparación de la comida? Okay, and last one for you next slide. ¿Crees que los hombres deben ayudar en casa? ¿Crees que los hombres deben ayudar en casa? A bit outdated, that question, but it's there, right? Okay, so first question. ¿Qué responsabilidades tienes en casa? What responsibilities do you have at home? Right? ¿Cómo ayudas en casa? So that's our first question. En mi casa, tengo la responsabilidad de limpiar mi dormitorio. So most of us, wherever we live, the main responsibility we have is to keep our area clean, right? Okay, so what responsibilities do we have in the home? How do you help? Right? Um, in my home, I have the responsibility of cleaning my room. All right. What could another answer me? A veces... So sometimes, idiomatic expression, right? Ayuda a mi mamá. I help my mother when she is cooking. Cuando ella cocina, right? En casa, también. So also at home, lavo los platos y la ropa. I wash dishes and clothes, right? Now, note that this is not reflexive because... The action is not being done to yourself. It's not being done to your body. It's being done to other um, objects, right? Dishes and clothes. So I help mother when she cooks. And also to wash dishes. And clothes. Right? All right, next question. ¿Cuándo ayudas con la preparación de la comida? So when do you help with food preparation? You know, when we're done with this, we'll go back and we'll practice saying um, never for all of them and not <laughs> the negative vision, right? So when do you help with um, preparing food, guys? Is there ever a time um, 
perhaps you might want to say for um, holidays or durante los días de festivo or los días festivos. Right? Uh, okay, so what do we have as an answer here? All right, so ayudo con la preparación de la comida los fines de semana, right? Reasonable, I help with preparing food on weekends, right? If you do it every day, you could say cada día. Um, okay, I think I have one more answer here. All right, so um, si elijo una receta nueva. So anybody has ever done this, you pick out a recipe you want to try at home, right? So si elijo una receta nueva. If I choose a, rest, a new recipe para probar, to try, right? Ayudo con las preparaciones. I help with the preparations. And probar, we remember, is to try, as in like to try a dish, to try food, not, tr not to try as an effort, right? All right. ¿Quién te ayuda en casa con tus tareas? So if your work is piling up, if you have too much homework, you have a test, you feel tired, you're overwhelmed, you're sick, who helps you in the house with your tasks, with your chores? ¿Quién te ayuda en casa con tus tareas? So we use words like tareas and um, que haceres for um, chores, right? And we use deber or deberes for homework, right? Or also tarea, I guess. All right, so who helps you in the house? Is it that your parents take pity on you, your mother? Maybe you have an older sibling who takes pity on you. All right, so C, the C is if, right? So if I have a lot of work, si tengo mucho trabajo o no me siento bien. So if I don't feel well, right? So if I have a lot of work, right? Or I do not feel well. Mi madre, my mother, or mi hermano mayor, right, me ayuda, will help me. My older brother helps me. So hermano mayor, older brother, right? And you could also have younger brother or younger sister, right, um, hermano menor. Okay, number 18, we've already answered. ¿Cuándo ayudas con la preparación de la comida? I'm missing a question mark here, but we've already answered that. When do you help with preparing food? So that is over here with on weekends and if um, you chose a new recipe. Wait, this is the same exact question. Okay, guys, this is my bad um, for not having deleted it. I didn't read closely enough, and I thought it was a slightly differently worded question. But now that I look at it, um, I realize it's the same thing. So just disregard that one. All right. Um, 19. ¿Crees que los hombres deben ayudar en casa? So everybody with brothers, let me hear. Or even if you are a brother or, or a son, you could give your answer to should, do you believe that men need to help in the house? Right, of course, exactly. So this is a really old fashioned question from a time when perhaps um, <clears throat> boys and men were not expected to do work in the house, right? 
All right. So, claro que sí. And I just have for que no el futuro, so in the future, ellos necesitarán, they will need um, cuidarse a sí mismos. They will need to take care of themselves. Are there any other um, answers that you would give to this question? If you think of something and you want us to put it in Spanish, just tell me and we will, right? But generally in the future, um, they will need to take care of themselves, right? So they will need, okay, so this expression could be a little tricky. Cuidarse, to take care of, it's reflexive. So it has to agree with, the third person um, say, so say is, is that form, right? So it, it looks the same. All right, and um, themselves are si mismos. All right, so here's another answer from a student. Si, sí, porque no quiero sacar la basura. So yes, because I do not want to take out the trash. You know, at home, sir is always willing to take out the trash. The issue is that he just never remembers. He very rarely remembers what days it has to go out on. So at that point, it's like, I might as well just take it out, you know? But I hear you. We don't. Some jobs um, in families, it depends on the family, right? Some families have certain jobs that male members do and certain jobs that female members do. And taking out the trash is traditionally seen as a male job, yeah. Remembering to take out the trash, though, it seems to be another job that might be a female job. All right. Well, our, our job that females in our society tend to do. Not that it is a female job, per se. All right. Um, we can move on to the next slide. All right. Um, so this, these questions are not so bad. This is about what we are going to have for our meals during the day, right? So I'm going to, the first one you could already say, ¿Qué tomas para el desayuno? Or, ¿Con qué te desayunas? What do you have breakfast with? What do you breakfast with? What do you have for breakfast, right? The other questions on the side, ¿Qué haces después del desayuno? Well, we've kind of already answered that, right? Um, ¿A qué hora es el desayuno? ¿A qué hora es el almuerzo? ¿A qué hora es la merienda? ¿Qué hora es la cena? And yeah, okay, all right. <clears throat> so let's go through. So, ¿qué tomas para el desayuno? ¿Con qué te desayunas? So let me hear, what do you all eat for breakfast? Guys, we didn't do the negative forms of the previous questions. We have to go back and do it just now when we're done with this, right? Somebody remind me, please, in the chat if I forget again. What do you all eat for breakfast? Do you all not eat breakfast? El pan y el queso, okay. Okay, cafe, so tom, okay, tomo el cafe, all right. Um, oh, all right, so tomo el cafe, I have coffee, and tomo los huevos revueltos, o um, cereal, o avena. This was just a way to put in um, different possibilities, right? So here's an answer from a student. Um, para el desayuno, me gusta comer pan y queso con jugo de naranja. <coughs> right, so me gusta... Comer pan y queso con jugo de naranja, right? All right. Um, ¿Qué haces después del desayuno? So what do you do after your breakfast, right? After breakfast, what do you do? So what do you guys do? Do you go to school? Do you um, 
do some revision? Do you brush your teeth after you have breakfast? Do you um, bathe and get dressed after you have breakfast? Some people, you know, have different orders for doing things in the morning, right? So whatever you say, they just check it to make sure you could say some action verbs in first person. Um, all right, so this way, del desayuno, me cepillo, I brush my teeth. Well, I brush, right? Um, I comb my hair. I dress, I get dressed. Right? Y voy a la escuela. I go to school. Um, by car with my parents. Right? Voy a la escuela en coche con mis padres. So después del desayuno, me cepillo, me peino, me visto. Y voy a la escuela en coche con mis padres. And if you would like, you could just say, después del desayuno, voy a la escuela en coche con mis padres. O voy a la escuela después del desayuno. All right. ¿A qué hora es el desayuno, el almuerzo, la merienda, la merienda, sorry, and la cena? So, breakfast, lunch, snack, dinner. Right? Do I have an answer? Sorry, my... um. My screen is frozen. All right, here we go. Okay, so, tomo el desayuno a las seis de la mañana. We've said that earlier on, right? Um, or you could say el desayuno es a las seis de la mañana, right? El almuerzo es al mediodía, mediodía, sorry. El almuerzo es al mediodía, right? At midday, um, como I eat from comer, como una merienda a las tres de la tarde. I eat a snack at three o'clock. And you could say cuando regreso de, um, de mi escuela when I return from school, right? And then we have y mi, mi familia y yo cenamos a las seis y media. Right, a la seis y media. So if you get this question, it's a nice opportunity to show that you understand, um, for instance, that la cena is a noun, but cena is also the verb to have dinner, right? And that uh, you can say mediodía, midday, and you can say, um, instead of just saying it is at, you can use a verb like como to um, sort of vary language, right? If you have any questions, um, let me know. I'm gonna count to, I'm gonna give us 30 seconds and then we're gonna go to the next slide, right? Oh, we have to go back and do the negatives for the one before. So 30 seconds either way. Okay, ready to go back? Guys, I'm sorry, I'm not giving a break for this class. Usually we would take a break, but I'm afraid that time will run out, right? Um, so if you need to take a break yourself, you just, you know, get up, go do what you have to do and come back, right? All right, so we're going back to the previous slides. I just want to revise some negative expressions together with you, right? <clears throat> Okay, so the first question, ¿Qué responsabilidades tienes en casa? Right? What responsibilities do you have in house? O ¿Cómo ayudas en casa? Um, <clears throat> we could simply say, no tengo. If we want to say, I don't have any responsibilities, right? 
no tengo responsabilidades. Right? Um, Como ayudas en casa, I never help. No, <coughs> nunca, sorry. Nunca ayudo en casa, right? Cuando ayudas con la preparación de la comida, right? So when do you help with preparing food? Again, we can say nunca ayudo um, con la preparación de la comida, but we can also say jamás ayudo con la preparación de la comida. So I never help with preparing food, right? ¿Quién te ayuda en casa con tus tareas? Who helps you in the home with your tasks? Nobody helps me. Nadie me ayuda, right? Okay, so... um. I don't have any responsibilities. No tengo responsabilidades en casa. I mean, I would add to that. I would say like, all I, I have to study. Tengo que estudiar y es todo. And that is all. I have to study, right? Um, or you could say nunca ayuda, ayudo, sorry, en casa, right? Because ayudar is a verb, so the, your form will be ayudo. When do you help with pre preparing food? I never help. Nunca ayudo con la preparación o jamás ayudo con la preparación, right? Who helps me in home? Nobody helps me. Nadie me ayuda en casa con mis tareas. All right, so 10 seconds and then we move on. And just a reminder, I'll say it again before you're in the class, but tomorrow at 10 o'clock is our next scheduled time. And that is to revise um, your school and career, right? Okie dokie. So let's go ahead. All right. So we're going to talk about where we go for lunch. Um, <clears throat> let me read the questions to you again, right? Not again, the first time. So two questions on the next side we're going to look at. ¿A dónde vas para el almuerzo? ¿A dónde vas para el almuerzo? And then the next, um, clase here. Normalmente... ¿Qué almuerzas los días de clases o los días festivos? Normalmente, ¿qué almuerzas los días de clases, los días festivos? ¿Qué almuerzas durante la semana um, o entre semana? ¿Qué almuerzas durante la semana entre semana? Right? Do those questions make sense to us? All right, so we are being asked, what do we have for lunch? So I'll just remind us that <clears throat> almorzar is a verb that means to have lunch, right? And of course, it is a radical changing verb, O to U E, right? And almuerzo. In addition to the fact that it could mean I have lunch, right? Or I am having lunch. It also just means lunch. I lunch, right? Okay, so let's look at first question. ¿A dónde vas para el almuerzo? So where do you go for lunch? Well, for most of us, most of the time, we can't go anywhere. We're trapped in school. So first thing we could say is, first thing we could explain, <coughs> durante la semana, 
Um, como el almuerzo, I eat my lunch, or I eat lunch con mis amigos al colegio, right? And you could also, instead of como el almuerzo, just almuerzo, right? I lunch with my friends. Al colegio en school. De vez en cuando, so from time to time. Now and then. Compro, I buy lunch from the cafeteria. Compro el almuerzo de la cafeteria. I buy lunch from the cafeteria. From the caf cafeteria. Mm -hmm. Now, where else do we go for lunch? So, weekends now. Los fines de semana. Mi madre y yo, my mother and I, so weekends, my mother and I, vamos a un restaurante. We go to a restaurant que se llama Pollo Loco to have lunch para almorzar, right? This was the only restaurant I could think of with a Spanish name. I know it's not internet anymore. I don't know if it's in other Caribbean countries, right? Crazy chicken. If you can think of another restaurant with a Spanish name, by all means, you could make one up. Um, you could call it La Cocina de, um, I don't know, Ana, right? Ana's Kitchen or something. Make up a Spanish restaurant name. All right, so during the week, we just have lunch in school, but... Um, on weekends, we go to our, we could say we go to a restaurant. I have um, my mother and I, but you could put, you know, your friends or your family or just you alone. Okay. Normalmente, ¿qué almuerzas los días de clases? And in the contrast to that is los días festivos, <coughs> holidays, right? So what do you have for lunch in, on weekdays, on class days? And on holidays, right? And then, ¿qué almuerzas durante la semana? So this one is actually literally weekdays. What do you have for lunch um, during the week? So what do you guys have for lunch during the week? Do you all eat lunch during the week? Okay, so los días de clases, comemos un, why do I have comemos? I have we eat, but it really should be como, right? Como, right, so I have corrected myself in the process of the exam, so no penalty for me, right? Como un sandwich, um, or, you know, una boca, un bocadillo, <coughs> A different type of sandwich, right? Or pan y queso, if you want to um, say that again. <coughs> um, Durante el almuerzo, right? During lunch. Now, what about festival days? How are we going to talk about what we eat on holidays? So I have los días de festivos. So on holidays, again, I have comemos. Um... Well, I guess that's your family. So this time it could be comemos, right? So you, but we could specify me, familia, y yo. Comemos platos especiales, special dishes, right? Como pollo asado, right? So roasted chicken. Y patatas fritas. So um, fries, potatoes, in my... um. In my world, that is a special treat, right? How? What else do you all eat on? Um, if suppose you want to explain macaroni pie to the examiner, what would you tell her or him? What else do you eat on festival days? When um last session we talked about what the family eats on a Sunday, that was one of the questions, right? And um. I use the example of a soup. So you, but you know, because, uh, well, a lot of families are into soup. Una sopa, corn, um, pollo, y verduras. Shepherd's pie. Okay, well, 
if we say something like shepherd's pie, if we say macaroni pie, we have to give a description, right? Um, so if we say macaroni pie, right, we might explain this, um, a casserole. We know what a casserole is, those baked dishes that um, go into the oven. Una casuela corn. Um, pasta y queso. How do you say pie? Well, the thing is, um, in other countries, when you say pie, you really mean the dessert. So I think we need to say casserole, but um, pie is like cake, tarta. Well, tarta, not torta, tarta. Right? But I think the implication is that would be a sweet thing. So I would say, una, if you're explaining this, I would say, um, comemos macaroni pie, que es una cazuela con pasta y queso, right? It's a casserole with pasta and cheese, right? But pie in Spanish is tarta, right? But people would be thinking of like a pumpkin pie or a pecan pie or along those lines. All right, I think we have one more answer here. Do we? No, we don't. Okay. All right, so say two seconds. If you all have any questions, please ask them. I don't think we could use um, pie, like literally translate the word pie, right? Just because um, <clears throat> other countries, um, when they say pie, every other country in the world, when they say the word pie, not, not um, always, but they think um, something sweet, right? The exception might be shepherd's pie. Everybody's shepherd's pie is, is mashed potatoes and some kind of meat as a base, right? So I think we have to say the word casserole. Because that is the word that people would understand. We have to translate the word casserole. All right. So let's go on to um, let's go on to the next um, set of questions. Actually, let me just read to you the next set of questions before we change the tag. ¿Cómo es la comida que se vende en la cafetería? ¿Cómo es la comida que se vende en la cafetería? Uh, la next question. Generalmente, ¿qué comes los domingos? Generalmente, ¿qué comes los domingos? What do you eat on Sundays? <coughs> right, so ¿cómo es la comida que se vende en la cafetería? Now, what is the question asking? Last night when I was preparing um, this last set of questions, I misinterpreted this question. What is this question asking? I thought they were saying, what does the cafeteria sell? Is that what the question is saying? It's not, is it? It's saying, um, what is the cafeteria like? Como es means, what is something like? How is it? Como is literally how. So how is it? How is the food that they sell in the cafeteria? So I started to say things like, well, they sell typical food. Se vende la comida típica, las hamburguesas, los sandwiches, las patatas fritas, right? And again, I just put together, um, maybe this is not typical ca cafeteria food. I just put things that are common, right? <clears throat> um. Es bastante bien. So it's good. It's okay. It's good enough, right? La comida. 
es bastante bien, right? Prefiero la comida que preparo mí mismo o mí misma, right? I prefer the food, I prefer food that I prepare myself. All right. Generalmente, ¿qué comes los domingos? Ah, uh, do you, guys, do you have another one? So you want to say for 25? You want to say, es terrible? Um, no me gusta la comida? You could say that. I don't like it. Starbucks, right? Um, if we say Starbucks, perhaps we should give a reason, right? This question is inviting us to describe a bit. You could say it's too expensive. It's demasiado caro. <coughs> well, cara, because it's la comida, right? All right. Generalmente, ¿qué comes los domingos? <coughs> and this is a similar answer to what we had before. On, um, well, I have, see, like I just copied and pasted, right? But really, this is supposed to be los domingos. Right. Comemos, we eat because who is eating on Sunday? It's probably your family, right? So again, you could say mi familia y yo. Right? Comemos. Or you could say como. Right? Now that we're going through it, um, I think that if you're saying comemos, you probably need to say mi familia y yo comemos. Otherwise, change our comemos to como, right? Because again, it's a conversation. Um and but it's in a foreign language, so you don't want it to think that you have forgotten how to say the yo form of the verb. All right, so como um, platos especiales, como pollo asado, patatas fritas. Luego comemos postre, generalmente una torta. So then we eat dessert, generally a cake, right? All right, so we have a few, two more slides, three more slides. Okay, so the next set of questions will be, ¿Qué haces en la mañana antes de ir a la escuela? <clears throat> so we've met this question already. What do you do in the morning before going to school? This is like saying, what do you do after you bathe or after you have breakfast, right? It can be the same answer. A qué hora vas a la escuela? What time do you go to school? ¿Cómo vas al colegio cada día? ¿Cómo regresas a casa por la tarde? ¿Qué te gusta hacer después de la escuela? ¿A dónde vas después de las clases? All right, so let's move on. I'm very concerned about um, trying to make sure we finish on time, right? Okay. ¿Qué haces en la mañana antes de ir a la escuela? What do you do in the morning before you go to school? So, antes de salir de casa, so we're using synonyms, right? Before leaving home, right? Me despierto, I wake up. Me levanto, I get out of bed, I brush my teeth, I bathe, me cepillo, me baño, me peino, I comb my hair, y me visto, I dress. Right? <clears throat> ¿A qué hora vas a la escuela? Voy a la escuela a las siete de la mañana. So I go to school. What time do you go to school? I go to school at seven o'clock in the morning. ¿Cómo vas al colegio cada día? How do you go to school every day? Voy en coche todos los días. Um, voy en autobús <coughs> todos los días. Anything else you want to ask? You could tell me about how to say it. You could tell me, right? ¿Cómo regresas a casa por la tarde? Regreso en autobús. I return by bus, right? Uh oh, so the one and the two are here together. All right, ¿qué te gusta hacer después de la escuela? 
what do you want to do after school? So more on this tomorrow, we do school and career, right? So I just have my gustaría ir a la universidad. I want to go to university. Um, y estudiar las matemáticas, right? And study maths. Obviously, it's a lie. Uh, but, you know, you can put in whatever subject you want to put. We'll go through some different ones tomorrow. ¿A dónde vas después de las clases? Where do you go after class? Regreso a casa. So I return home. Except some days I have lessons. Con excepción de, so <clears throat> with the exception of, right? Wednesdays, los miércoles. On Wednesdays, cuando voy a un centro académico, I go to an academic center para las clases de repaso, revision classes, right? All right, so I'm giving us 30 seconds. Yeah, so these questions are nice. It's just to give facts. It's just to give information, nothing to describe. You could just get to the point. You don't need to impress the examiner with, um, by saying more sentences than necessary, right? And for the last question, 32, if, you know, that's too much for you, you could just say, I go home, right? Regreso a casa. End of story. If you're worried about making mistakes with the rest. Okay, so our next slide has to do with relaxation, right? <clears throat> so two questions here you can listen for. ¿Hablas con alguien por teléfono todos los días? ¿Hablas con alguien por teléfono todos los días? And then the next question, ¿descansas durante el día? ¿Descansas durante el día? ¿Duermes una siesta cada día? Duermes una siesta cada día. So, relaxation. Hablas con alguien por teléfono todos los días. Do you speak with anyone by phone every day? Now, I've been told that um, younger generations, or maybe it's my generation, we don't like talking on the phone. Do you like to talk on the phone? Do you like to call people and talk to them? No, no, yeah, all right. So again, this is an older question. Yeah, sometimes, somewhat, okay. So no hablo por teléfono con nadie todos los días. So I do not speak with anyone, but in Spanish, you know, they use a double negative, right? So I do not speak by phone with no one, which translates in English to I do not speak um, by phone with anyone, right? Todos los días, every day. Pero... Envio mensajes durante el día a mis amigos, but I send messages during the day to my friends, right? Um, mensajes de texto, you could add. I send text messages, right? So I do not speak by phone with um, anyone every day, right? I don't talk to anybody every day, but I send messages during the day to all my friends. Right? Mensajes de texto. Okay. Descansas durante el día. Duermes una siesta cada día. 
Do you relax during the day? Do you take a rest during the day? Do you take a siesta? Do you sleep for a siesta each day? Well, I hope it's not everybody saying every day since some of those days you'll be in school and your teacher might take that <clears throat> a how if you fall asleep for a siesta in your class, right? So siesta in casa. So if I'm at home, do I know for that Saturday? I sleep in the evening, right? Pero durante los días escolares, so during school days, no puedo descansar porque hay demasiado trabajo. I cannot rest because there is too much work, right? Now, somebody earlier on had said that they'd take a, semester, a siesta, right? So um, let's see if we could formulate an answer. Um, cada día, <coughs> después, um ooh, después de um regresar a casa right duermo una siesta right so every day after returning home um I have a siesta, I take a siesta, I sleep for a siesta, a nap, all right? All right, so 30 seconds. All right, let's go to our last slide. All right, so when I put this together, I envisioned us working out some answers together, right? Which would take a little bit longer, but might be worth it, right? All right, so, oh, I didn't even change the title of this slide. Well, we'll just get rid of this. Right, Um, what do you do before going to bed? What do you like to do before going to bed? Or what do you physically do before going to bed? <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to give you a minute to think about it. And you can put your answer in the chat. What do you do before going to bed? Now, acostar se, to go to bed, is a reflexive verb. So, antes de acostar. Me, right? Before I go to bed, what do you do? You brush your teeth again, perhaps, Mr. Pio? <coughs> um, okay, you like to read, okay, Leo. <coughs> Anybody listens to music? Sorry. Okay. Well, we could also just um fib a little bit and pretend, right? Escucho a la música. Anybody drinks anything before they go to bed? Can we say warm milk? Sorry. <coughs> um, bebo. Oh, well, tomo, right? E tomo <coughs> leche. Um, and I drink milk. E tomo leche. Right? Okay, so now the question is getting a little harder. That 35 was pretty normal. 36. 
Describe algo interesante que has hecho recientemente. So describe um, something interesting that you did recently. So think about it. And again, I'm going to encourage you to think about a mall incident. All right, so <clears throat> we're going to talk about, I, I'm going to use going to the mall vocabulary, right? If you all have other things, you could also suggest that. Okay, if you tried a new dish, you could say that. Yes, what was the new dish? All right, so if we, oh, sushi, very good, okay. And did we like it? So fui al centro comercial con mis amigos, right? Um, <clears throat> recientemente, so la semana pasada, last week. And we could say we tried a new dish. <clears throat> so what is it verb for to try when we're talking about food? We met it earlier. Remember, probar, right, good. Okay, so probamos. Um, <clears throat> un plato nuevo que se llama sushi or whatever you want to call it, right? Was it delicious? <coughs> I'm so sorry about this cloth. Okay, now when we are answering this question, please pay attention to the the, the sentence is used, the question is using perfect tense, right? Okay, ask each of you have done. So it has to be in past tense. So <clears throat> um, all right, so I'm looking at an answer in the chat. So I'll go interesante. No, I'm not saying you have to respond in perfect tense. Huh? I'm just saying, what am I saying? Be mindful of how you're stringing your tenses together. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I'll I'll go into interesante que um <clears throat> I'm gonna put a h o. I'm gonna put back the perfect tense, right? Um. All right, let me, let's change the structure of this response. We will run into problems grammatically. Let's go back to this recientemente. So I'm sorry if people wrote it down. Recientemente, right? Um, <coughs> mi amigo y yo, o mi amiga y yo. <coughs> Hicimos um, un... TikTok, right? Um, <clears throat> fue muy interesante. Interesante, right? You know, if you say if, um, it was fue, or if you say era, either one would, I mean, they mean different things, but given that it's a conversation, you wouldn't lose marks grammatically, right? <clears throat> It was very interesting.
You see, if we start responding by saying something interesting that I did was um, <clears throat> the, the, the verbs that come after the was will be complicated, right? It won't, it won't just be put in the tense that you're seeing in English. We would have to do it differently. So let's reorganize the answer. Instead of saying um, something interesting, something interesting I did was, we'll start with what we did, right? So we did this, so I did this. It was very interesting. <clears throat> okay, last question. ¿Qué hace la familia los domingos por la tarde? Um, well, <clears throat> again, you know, guys, you could suggest something. Um, there are lots of, what do you all do on a Sunday evening? Do you stay home? We could say quedamos en casa. Right, I was going to send you all back to the mall. But in reality, the malls are closed on Sunday in um, a lot of places. So probably not. So we stay at home, right? We could say um, <clears throat> visitamos mis abuelos. Right? No, we can't say both of these. Uh, you can't stay home and visit your grandparents. Um, <clears throat> we could take a walk, yeah. <clears throat> Caminamos. All right. Anything else you all can think of? We could go to the beach. <clears throat> Vamos a la playa. Right. Right. But I just remember, quedamos en casa means to stay at home. So do not um, put, if you say that, do not then say the other things. Right. All right, guys, any thoughts or any questions? Anything anybody wants to ask? Any slide you want to go back to? <clears throat> Sorry, one second. All right, so the people who are following on YouTube a bit later, um, prob probably not until tonight, I will post this link so you could access the PowerPoint um, if you would like to, right? To the people in the meeting, I'm Put the link in the chat <clears throat> so you can access the PowerPoint if you would like to review anything, right? You will also have the video that you could use to go back over if you need to, right? All right, so this brings us to the end of this session on um, daily routine. The next session that we will do tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. is going to be on school and career, right?